Hey guys, it's Shadow Knight Paladin, and welcome back to my channel. So today, we are working on a traditional piece. We are using the Polycomas colored pencils, the Sakura Micron Pigma pens, and a brush pen. The paper that I'm working on right now is cardstock that I got from uh, Craft Doodle. And I bought this last year actually. And when I first tried it, I used it with watercolor. Uh, I used to do the Sakura Koi watercolors, and I wasn't really impressed with how it handled the watercolor. Specifically, it absorbed really, really quickly, and it a couple of layers would erode the paper itself really quickly. So I thought, why do people like this? Um, it doesn't really take watercolor well. And I realized that I heard it the most when people use Copics with it. I don't have Copics, I only have... The Pit Artist brush pens, which is Inja ink, so it's not alcohol based markers or anything. So it sat here just like gathering dust for a little bit for a couple of months, and I got my Polycomas pencils, and I thought, hey, let's you know have some fun with it. I want to do more colored pencil work, so I just thought, why don't I try it with the cardstock paper and give it another chance. Surprisingly, it did work out really well with the colored pencils and the fine liners. I thought that the glossy surface would interfere with the blending or the layering or the limit the amount of layers I could add on. Surprisingly, it didn't. Uh, it actually worked fantastically with the colored pencils. So, I decided to go with this series that I've had, that I had um, thought up of maybe like mid last year, and. I wrote it down in my ideas notebook. Just like, hey, I'll do this sometime. It's a fun idea. And I'll do this when I don't have any ideas in my head. And then I forgot about it. And I kept on drawing other things. And then I was just browsing through that ideas notebook the other day that I saw it. And I remembered that I remembered it actually during December. And I thought of it as like a, hey, let's do this as a monthly series. So... I wanted to do a flower a month. So, you must be familiar with birthstones, who are like May is emerald, or a certain month is sapphire, and so on and so forth. I wanted to do that with flowers, since I knew that there were birth flowers. Except, I really, really forgot about it. And then, I remembered it like two days ago. Like, oh, didn't I want to do a series with flowers? And then, I had to... Really think about it. Do I want to do it next year? That I was on the month itself, or do I just forget about it again and potentially not be able to do it again? So I decided to do it, as you can see. And the thing is, since January is long past and it's the end of February, I'll be doing it in this system. So January and Feb will be catching up. So I might post it consecutively. It depends if I get the Feb drawing done right away. And then for March, April, and so on and so forth, I'll be posting it monthly. So let's hope I don't forget to do it. <laughs> so the idea here was like to make like small cards. I actually wanted to do tarot cards, but I decided like small portraits were kind of cute right now. So I decided to go with like something like this instead. So it's like a trading card of sort. And yeah. So... I'm doing January's birth flower, or flower for January, which is the carnation. And according to Wikipedia and some other flower sites, um, the carnation is the flower for January for UK. For the US, I read that it was the snowdrop and carnation. I went with carnation mainly because of my familiarity with it. Uh, I've heard about it. It's one of the more common colors in the Crayola crayon packs when you were younger. And I feel like I've heard about I've heard it more. I feel like I've seen it more. And I actually don't know what a snowdrop looks like. So I went with Carnation and I went ahead and researched on it. And I found out that the symbolism for Carnation is love, fascination, and distinction. It can also mean pure love and good luck, depending on the color. So another tidbit of sort is that the pink carnation is uh, heavily tied to some religious 
aspects, and that is mainly because it's tied to Mother Mary. Supposedly, it's the flower most associated with her, and because it's associated with her, uh, it's it became the flower that symbolizes motherhood. So the pink carnation is a flower that is like used during Mother's Day and stuff like that. So I ended up going with it mainly because. I don't know. The pink carnation is really nice. Uh, it's very sweet to look at. Very delicate and gentle. So I wanted to go with that feel. So I, when I was making my thumbnails for this piece, I made like three that was like very serene, one that focused on fascination, and the other as distinction. Love and serenity are pretty common themes. Fascination is also pretty common. But distinction, combine distinction with a very sweet flower and a very calm piece or sweet piece will be a bit more challenging. So in order to do that, I made like this race around the female character and funnily enough, it does reminisce or it does remind, uh, remind you or me maybe. It reminds me a bit of how the old art and the illustrations of Jesus Christ or Mother Mary um, or the saints, they would have this like halo and it was drawn somewhat in this manner and I sort of did that unconsciously like I'm not very religious myself but I know enough I mean I'm religious enough to pray and like that but I'm not like super deep into it so I wasn't really aiming to make this a religious piece it just so happens that the elements just came together and ended up looking a little bit religiously inspired <laughs> another thing is um, so I chose the pink carnation. I used that as the center, central color of the entire piece. I wanted to make the rest of the color scheme match with the pink carnation and make it look stand out. Um, so I chose colors based on what would work well with the pink, which happened to be blue and yellow. <laughs> so the yellow was mainly because I wanted to make that halo of sorts to draw attention to the character, to make it like move towards her well first the yellow since it's really bright its um, role is to catch the attention of the viewer and then by putting in that orangey gradient from the edges towards the center it to draw the eye towards the female character and then for the female character I wanted to use a more toned down color so that it doesn't clash with the yellow of the background and so that it would wouldn't be as distracting or it wouldn't steal the show against the carnation. So I went to really I went with the really soft pastel powdery blue, which becomes funny because if you think about it, or if you're familiar with Christian theology, Mother Mary <laughs> is really tied to the color blue. <laughs> I mean the I won't call her the patron saint, but the culture that I came from uh, is really devoted to Mary to the point that our school song is um, Mary for you for your white and blue <laughs> which becomes funny since like oh yes, when I finished drawing it it's like oh I went with Mary colors in the end and pink carnation okay then <laughs> so it is a bit coincidental I guess it's, it's a bit influenced I was a little influenced by it when I read the the symbolism of the pink carnation, but it just happened like this, I guess. And also because the color scheme really did turn out really well with those three colors. So yeah. <laughs> so this piece, despite being pretty small, took me quite some time to finish. It took me the entire day. Uh, usually, when I would use smaller canvases with my watercolor works. It would take me like half a day, and then the video would last around 6-7 minutes. But this one, this was had more than enough footage to rival even my normal, bigger watercolor pieces. So I had to trim it down and speed it up as much as possible. It made me speed it up because the colored pencils really take a long time to do. Uh, there's a lot of layering involved, a lot of blending involved. So... With a lot of repetitive actions that could be sped up and nothing would be like lost that much. Another reason this took so long was because I did make this in two parts of sorts. Uh, I was gonna leave it with this with like the white background 
and only the race as like the more defining factor of the background, I guess. And then I went to bed. I already posted the the not the preview of it on Instagram and Facebook. And then when I woke up, I saw it again. So like, oh, it's actually pretty lacking. So I went ahead and added some black to it to create more distinction to the race. And then I would add some white uh, race, I guess, and highlights and stars and like that. And it made it more vibrant and interesting to look at. And I also added a bit more depth and shadows to the flowers, put some highlights into it. And it made it more look more pop-up and more interactive and vibrant and interesting. So, yeah. That's why it took so long to finish. And I have a ton of footage for it. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will be continuing this. I'll be doing February next. I haven't really researched on it yet, but I'll be doing it next. I actually did enjoy working on this with the colored pencils since it's not my main medium and I'd love to work more on it. So I'll be continuing this series, series throughout the year and I hope you guys enjoyed and will tune into that. So yeah. Uh, follow me on Facebook leave it on Instagram and I'll see you around.